when you first start applying for roles in the field, you can make so many mistakes. I have made a ton of mistakes when I was applying for jobs, both when I was after my first job and when I was after my second job. This video is going to be me sharing my mistakes with you guys so you can avoid them when you're applying for your jobs in bioinformatics. If you're new here, my name is Georgia and I am a bioinformatician. I've been in the field for three years now and I've applied to many, many, many jobs. I love my job and I'm glad that I made the mistakes in the previous ones because they got me to my current one, but I think it's very helpful to know the best way of going about these things. So I have applied, well, I've had two application cycles. First, when I finished my degree after my internship, and then two and a half years into my role when I was looking for my next move. So I've applied for very entry level and then kind of mid-level jobs. So let's dive into what not to do when you're applying for jobs in bioinformatics. One mistake I made was I didn't save the job description or the website. So little did I know some companies when they put up, well to be fair like most, most companies, <laughs> um, they'll take down the job advert. So if you've been applying for loads of jobs, because obviously you are going to be applying for more than one, those job adverts don't stay there. And if you don't save the description of that job, and then someone calls you up and says, hi, um, would love to have you in for an interview for this, this, this role. And you're sat there being like, I cannot remember what the hell that was about. <laughs> um, especially in bioinformatics, right? Because we can work in so many different fields. We can be using different technologies. Some companies can have multiple roles doing different things that you might have applied for. So if you don't know what the job description is, how on earth are you gonna be persuasive at interview that you're a good candidate for that role? So I think when you're applying for roles, you should definitely keep a log of, with, to be fair, I did keep a log but I didn't then have the job description in it. So in your log, when you're applying for jobs, as well as having like when you've applied and like your stage and whatever, make sure you save that job description so that you know what job is calling you when they call you back um, after your amazing application. So yeah, definitely save those job ads. So another mistake I have made when applying for jobs is thinking that when an employer says, oh, we'd just like to have a quick five to 10 minute chat with you. Um, that that means they just want a quick five to 10 minute chat. Um, if someone's taking time out of their day to have a conversation with a potential applicant, then they're expecting you to be ready for whatever they might ask you. So to be fair, some of my five to 10 minute little chats have just been that they have been five to ten minute chats and i think that's what made me bring my guard down because i'd had some that were just chats where i just came in chatted about my cv they were just kind of checking i was who i said i was you know screening before the real interview but then suddenly one day i jumped on a call for a five to ten minute chat and they started asking me in-depth technical questions about their product <laughs> And obviously in hindsight, like, of course they want to check that I know their company and their product. Of course they're going to presume that I've combed through everything there is to know about this employer. And I would do that normally for the real interview, but I never used to do that for the initial screening call. So now I would always suggest, even if someone says they just want to have a five to 10 minute chat, I would always prepare for that and not just the preparing that I used to do where I just, you know, read through my CV and was like sure of what points, you know, to mention in each of them. Prepare in the sense of take that chat as if it's a real, real interview. Know the company, know the company values, go through their website, like see who the CEO is, the COO is. Um, look at the team if you can, reread that job description that you've saved and make sure that you understand if it's, you know, an actual industry company or like what their main products are or if it's academia, what their main papers are. 
never go into that chat being blindsided that it's just a chat because it might be but it isn't always uh so another mistake i made uh and this is so embarrassing um but this channel's about sharing my mistakes so i ghosted <laughs> um i ghosted a couple companies um i started applying for roles and i then realized that i wasn't ready to leave my current job and then instead of kindly saying oh, i'm really sorry i'm not interested in this anymore um i just panicked and ignored an email about an interview uh and that's just so wrong like what if i want to go work there in the future and someone will be like oh well that's the girl that ghosted us um well i doubt they'll do that but you know like you never know when you're going to want to have a connection with a company or a person and if you've done that in an interview process that's just a huge red flag so if you do start applying for something and you realize you don't want to go for it let them know you know send them an email because uh, ghosting is bad we don't ghost um and i've learned my lesson now and i will never ghost again so the next mistake i made on my job application journey and this was in the first round not in my second job hunt but when i was fresh out of uni and i knew no better i didn't use recruiters i didn't use recruiters and it's really funny because one of my best friends is literally a recruiter and i didn't even consider to use a recruiter when finding a role so yeah use recruiters they're people who are paid their sole job purpose is to find people jobs so you know they have everything to gain from you reaching out and saying hey look this is my cv this is what i'm interested in uh please can you like you know take my cv there's loads of companies that will just keep your cv on file and then they'll call you up every so often being hey georgia still looking for a job like got this opportunity um so yeah use recruiters um funnily enough i actually got my first job by a recruiter um but by accident so i'd sent in my cv to this role on linkedin um and this is another thing with when like recruiters post jobs they don't post where they are um so i just applied to this role you know as a genomic data scientist at life science research institute had no idea where it was um but i fitted the skills and then yeah a recruiter called me and was like hey um you know love your cv like can we chat i'd love to put you forward for the role um and then the experience was just great like they took my cv they wrote my cover letter i think because i never wrote a cover letter but then later on i found out that it was a you know requirement of the interview so they must have written me a cover letter um and they then go and bat for you you know um they go and bat for your salary because the more money that they get for you the more commission they make use recruiters uh, is the is the story there they can be very very helpful even if you're early career you know uh, so definitely do not miss out on the wonder that is recruiters i'm sure i've made many many more mistakes along the way uh, but these are the ones that i'm going to share with you today i hope that they've been really really helpful and again if you've enjoyed the video please give it a like and subscribe to the channel and i will be sharing much much more of my journey into bioinformatics right here on genomics with georgia see you next time